Maven, an expert, an authority, a connoisseur, a specialist, a professional, a knowledge king, a rock and roll sports talker. Coons Ford of Security Boulevard is proud to present The Sports Maven with Bruce Posner, a no-holds-barred look at the sports world. Now, here's Bruce Posner, The Sports Maven. Well, welcome in, everybody, this weekend. Gorgeous out, 80 degrees after suffering through three Oriole games that were so cold. Well, the third one wasn't too bad. You know, before I start the show today, because I have a theory to espouse, teach my young producer a lesson, okay? Uh, I was there Monday night when the Orioles had their worst crowd ever, all right? And I have to tell you something. It was cold. It wasn't like it was, you know, chilly. It was downright cold. And not only should the specter of not having a lot of fans show up be harassed or or, uh, mounted on the Orioles, it's a miracle anybody went. I mean, I got to give every fan who went to that game uh, credit. And there weren't many. I think the announced crowd was seven grand, and I doubt that there's that many there. But that's not the point. The people that were there had to suffer through a freezing night. What is the solution, Danny? I'll tell you what it is. When they're playing these games in early April, they've got to sprinkle in some day games. Because the same lousy crowd would have been there at noon that was there at 7.30 or 7 o'clock. And I think that uh, for the fans' sake, they just have to like play in warmer situations. It was, so, it was pretty quiet there. I mean, when Manny hit his home run Monday night... You know, if they didn't blast the music to 15 decibels or 150 decibels, you wouldn't have heard anything. But, wow, unbelievable. Now, so I, I'm, uh, I'm not even getting to the Orioles yet. Uh, that's next. But this much I will tell everybody listening. Everybody knows I'm involved with uh, Atman's Foods, good friends with Mark Atman. And even in these small crowds, that stand is off the charts. They are just busy as can be. But it's not just that. The entire stadium has upgraded the food. And it's fantastic. I don't know if you've been yet, Danny. But if you walk around the lower tier all right, and, and the upper tier, you see choices of food that, you, that you've never seen before. Absolutely. And at reasonable prices. No, it's not cheap, but nothing's cheap anymore. I mean, there's nothing that's cheap. And they still let you bring in your own food, which is still a miracle. Right, and they still let you, but you can augment it with what you buy there. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, they have other things, kids' cups and things like that. There is possible to go there now, in my opinion, and get decent food. Now, Atman's is off the charts. It's no question about it. Uh, they're kosher hot dog. You, they can't keep them there. They ran out of bologna the other night. You imagine running out of bologna. But, but, let me go into my quick lesson for Danny, all right? As he's lamenting Chelsea, although they just tied the game against Southampton, 2-2. Two to two. The hardest thing to do in sports is what? It's to repeat, all right? And uh, what happens when you win? That's why the Eagles now, you know, they got Mike Wallace now, and, you know, they're saying it's a great upgrade over Tory, which I'm not so sure about, but... Uh, the great, the hardest thing to do now. What's wrong? What's going to happen to the Eagles? If you think they're going to have clear sailing to another title, that's not going to happen. Number one, they already have a problem with Nick Foles. It's already a problem. All right. Did uh, Carson Wentz is not going to be ready for opening day? Nick Foles is going to start, and the odds are that they're going to, you know, probably win or play well, and. What's going to happen when Carson Wentz comes back? You're going to have an unhappy second-string quarterback. And he could say, not so much because he's second-string, but because why, Danny? Because he's not getting what? He's not getting paid. And, and you know, when one guy's making, you know, $15 million, the other guy's making, you know, bare minimum in the football world, I shouldn't say in the real world. So it's tough. Now, that harkens me back to... Uh, things that matter to me. The Eagles don't matter to me. Chelsea doesn't matter to me. But I will tell you what does matter. That's Maryland men's lacrosse. <laughs> now, you, now I, listen, it's true. You lose your entire attack, right? Your entire attack. You lose the defenseman of the year, Timmy Muller. You lose so many guys. You lose 
uh, John Garino, your face-off guy. And what happens? What's Maryland's record right now? Do you know, Danny? They're 9-1. and one. And what are they ranked in the country? Numero uno, number one in the country. Now, they might not necessarily win the national championship, but that's not the point. The point is, is that Tillman's been able to regroup, uh, utilize Connor Kelly as his new leader, setting up Jared Bernhardt as the new leader for next year, and the year after, after Connor Kelly leaves. And uh, the defense, Bryce Young, has stepped up. It's amazing that Maryland could go in the gauntlet that they just went on and win every game. Well, you, they they have an amazing, amazing coach in, in in Coach Tillman, and he obviously has a very strong culture where he is, and it, that, obviously that is the biggest factor when it comes to rollover in college sports or in any sport. When you have a culture in place and you have a guy who is bought into a system and can get his players to buy into a system, it makes it a lot easier to at least come back with a uh, with a competitive next year. Now, when it, when it comes to my team that, that that you brought this up with with Chelsea, that's not necessarily the case, and it's it's, it's very frustrating. I mean, and, and I want to, you know, uh, completely derail our, our, our listeners with, with boring uh, soccer stuff. But when, when, when you win a championship and then you can't even get back to contention basically the next year and, and you take such a big step back. Danny, yeah, that, they scored again. All right. Well, anyway, Bruce, uh, they're still they're still out of the they're still out of the Champions League, still out of the top of the table. The coach is still gone. But uh, thank you for uh, for giving me some indulgence because uh Chelsea's it doesn't a, say much for Southampton. Yeah, they were, they were up to nothing about 15 minutes ago. All right, let's so. get to the Orioles. Let's, get, okay. let's do it. Let's get down to business. How in the world can you keep putting Chris Tillman on the mound? I blogged the other day. And I brought it in to read. O's and Chris Tillman are 2-1 to one underdogs tonight at Boston. It could get ugly. Did it get ugly? First inning. It's, it, it's vintage Orioles. It's vintage Chris Tillman at this point. It's, it's recent vintage. Listen, that's 20 straight starts for Chris Tillman. Without a win. That's uh, he, on his last 32 starts, only six of them he's lasted to the sixth inning. I mean, it's it's really, really bad right now. And, and we were talking about this when he first signed. And he, he was a low-risk, high-reward sort of guy. We know him. You hope that he was bouncing back from the shoulder. But here's the thing, Bruce. I mean, people talk about like the, like trying to give him benefit of the doubt and say that he's rusty and all that stuff. He came back well into last season and got a lot of time to pitch himself back into shape. And he couldn't stay in the rotation. He was demoted to the bullpen. And they brought him back on a major league deal. Now, granted, it was only three mil and that that's all that's guaranteed and if they release him they'll have to pay all three they gave him the major league deal because it looked like the tigers were going to give him a little bit more of a favorable minor league deal so basically just to make it get all the tigers up now right all right right just say will you take over half the money the only problem is i don't see who they put in his place it doesn't matter you can't do you know, I know you don't know much about odds and spreads because you don't care about it, and I really don't either anymore, but it is a barometer. I, The Orioles got up to a 5-2 to two underdog last night with Tillman in a baseball game. I understand. This doesn't happen. No, he's the worst. You could argue that statistically since the beginning of last year, he is the worst starting pitcher in baseball. And I'm with you. Like, I would rather see a random double-A arm like Alex Wells, even if he is only 19 years old. I'd rather see that with some upside than a lost Chris Tillman. But I, I'm nervous since Buck loves his guys, and I love Buck. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trashing Buck. Oh, Buck's Buck. staying with him. He, he, you Bucks, heard him last exactly. night after the game. He's staying with him. Absolutely. And, and I think that's to, that's to, me, to a fault. To me, Danny... The biggest game of the year, not so much if we were going to lose tonight, is tonight. And I'll tell you, today. Is it today? Yeah, I think it's 1 o'clock today. And that's because Alex Cobb is pitching. Now, you know, you can't expect him to go more than four or five innings. And, you know, that's fine. But if he doesn't come through, if he wasn't, if he isn't the guy who we think he is, or if he starts getting hit this this season, the 5-9 and nine right now, and it could turn into a 60, 65 win season. I thought 71 and a half over under was a, just a tremendous over uh, wager. Guess what? It wasn't. All right. This, this team is lackluster. And then we have the other subject of I thought that I think it was Ken Wyman said the other day that he refuses to call Chris Davis crush until he gets over 100 a batting average. Well, he's over 100 now. This is, I mean, That pitch he took on two and two with two men on, that wasn't an issue of whether it was a strike or not. It was dead over the plate, and it's the kind of pitch 
that if he puts his puts the wood on it, you know, in the old Chris Tillman, I mean Chris uh, Chris Davis, that ball's gone. And he looked at it for strike three, threw his bat down, and it's a miracle the ump didn't throw him out. But I, he wasn't mad at the ump. He was mad at himself. Well, he's mad at himself because it goes a lot more than his inability to, you know, uh, make contact or, I mean, he, he, he looked, like you said, he looks lost up there. He's taking queer strikes. And you remember the imposing 50 home run Chris Davis. He would walk up there with a borderline swagger. He was a true cleanup hitter. P- people planned their pitching strategy around the fact that he was going to come up and hit the ball hard and hit it to all fields. I planned my exit from the stadium on Chris Davis. I would never leave the stadium if the Orioles were winning or losing if Chris Davis was coming up in the bottom of the seventh or bottom of the eighth because I'd love to see it bad. Now, I have to tell you something. It's painful to watch him. It, it is. really is. It's it is. painful. I mean, he got a double on Wednesday night. And you know what? He got two hits Wednesday night and guess what happened? The Orioles won. It's always been that case. Some, somehow or another, when he does well, the Orioles win. Even batting sixth or eighth or whatever. But right now, you can't have a guy in the lineup batting 100. What's he batting, 110? You can't. I mean, I, it, to me, it's, I, I, I don't know what they're going to do with that, but my worries about the Orioles is not the attendance and things like that. The attendance will be there in the summer. It'll be there when it gets warm out. You know, games, are, I understand, are already sold out now. Memorial Day is virtually a sellout. Uh, when the Yankees come in, everybody's coming to see them. When Utani comes in, who's not? I mean, you know, there's other teams that you go see, other than just the, uh, other than just the uh, Orioles. But uh, I don't know. You got six games coming up now, and it's possible they go back to Baltimore. I hate to say it, you know, maybe they'll win one of these six. I don't, you know, Detroit's. I just don't know. The confidence is lost right now. And uh, who's to blame? Sorry, Dan. It's on you, baby. It really is. You've got to get – you to, to approach this season with the pitching staff that we now have, and only by a miracle did we get Alex Cobb. You know, what – made him want to come here. I guess it was just more money. Uh, well, and, and apparently all reports point to, and uh, Ken Rosenthal had an amazing piece out yesterday morning on The Athletic talking about the uh, the flux that the Orioles are in. It, all accounts say that Brady Anderson was the person who led the signing of Kashner and Cobb and the return of Chris Tillman. Like, he brokered all those deals. Well, and, they let him be the general manager. That, that's what I'm saying. That That's what I'm saying. And it's... it's uh, it's a really bad look right now for the Orioles to not only be so uncertain about their future in terms of obligations, in terms of contracts, but you know when they're looking so listless and hapless out on the field, it, it, it's it's very very frustrating to watch. It, it, it seems like we are in need of buckling ourselves up for a ninety loss season. That's what they were last year. We are they are who. They have been. They might not be what we thought they could be, but they are who we thought they were. Well, Kasher had a nice game the other day, and Bundy yeah. had a nice game. And Bundy looks like it was an ace, an absolute legit ace. There are That's no- the only hope. If Cobb comes along today and does well, and you have Bundy, and you have Kasher, and you have Cobb, and maybe Tick Galsman once in a while, you know, then that fifth starter, I'd try anybody. You know, I'd put Danny in there. <laughs> uh, I'd put Danny do in there. But uh, I, I don't know. It's it's very, very, uh, what's the word? Frustrating? Frustrating is the word. <laughs> because you go out to the game, you love to watch the team. and uh, Man, I wish they were home this weekend with how nice it is I'll outside. Tell you what else, huh? I'll tell you what else is bothersome a little bit. This is, and you know I don't mean to continually bash the Orioles because I love them and that's this why is, this I is care. A therapeutic pro- this is it cathartic. is it is. What's you know you come Adam Jones comes and Adam Jones is great. He comes up bases loaded one of the games mm-hmm. at home, three two pitch. He swings at a pitch that you know you needed a long driver to be able to hit the ball. It was on the ground outside of the strike zone. Where's that? He he didn't do that last year, and now it's coming back. I, I'm not sure. Quite. I mean, like w- whenever Adam Jones is uh, 
is stretching, you know, when, whenever whenever he's trying to really get something going, he he is one to put all disappoint out the window. I mean, I could say the same thing right now. I mean, and he's heated up a little bit more over the last week. He had a good game. Scope, scope, scope does the same thing, but the ball's at his eyes. I mean, he, he he just cannot resist the temptation of hitting a 460 foot three uh, three run home run, and you can't blame him because he's awfully good at it. But it's 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 very frustrating. And we I mean we were talking about it on Ken Wyman's show this week. It's that. Except for Manny Machado, who is still legitimately hitting over 300, the team as a whole going into last night's game was hitting 216. That, that's, that's, that's fourth worst in baseball. And, and you know, listen, the one thing about this team is you should not question the hitting. Exactly. And, and I will tell you this point. much. As crazy as it sounds, I mean, I know Pedro Alvarez had a big hit against the Yankees. It was a monster. But uh, the return of Mark Trumbo was going to help the lineup. Why, if you look back last year, Mark Trubbo had more winning hits than anyone. And uh, I don't know, but he's not the answer. He certainly isn't the answer. But here's a question for you that we'll leave this segment on. All right. And that is, is Des Bryant the answer? The Ravens are one of four teams that are showing interest in Des Bryant. And naturally, all four of them need receivers. Is, could Des Bryant hook up with uh, Michael Crabtree and all of a sudden is Des Bryant finished is a better question. I don't think he is. I think he had a bad year. And I think that uh, the the uh, essence of the guaranteed contract showed its head with Des Bryant. But for the Cowboys to release him, uh, you know, that's what you got to do. But, you know, a two-year deal with the Ravens, could that work? I You know, if I was John Harbaugh, and, you know, my butt's on the line a little bit. I would be screaming for Des Bryant. You, you're not going to find anybody better than Des Bryant in the draft or anywhere. A guy who's capable of making everything happen. But uh, we'll talk about that when we come back. This is Bruce Posner. You're listening to Coons Ford presents the Sports Maven. Danny, this Saturday and every Saturday for the past decade. It's a good run. Decade. It's a good run. It is a good and run. And you and I have been here together for almost two years now. Unbelievable. All right, back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Welcome back to Sports Maven, presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, once again, here's Bruce Posner, Sports Maven. Des Bryant, up or down? I'm asking you. Down. No way. Okay. Well, I mean, I think there's a way. Adam Schefter tweeted last night that the Ravens have a chance at him. That 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 between the Jets, the Ravens, uh, he put the Bills on there. Um, there's there's definitely a chance. I just don't. The think... The question is, do they want him? Well, I I think that for the right price they would. They won't be able to get him for the right price. And Bruce, I don't know about you, but he. Ha- I mean, Des Bryant hasn't been a true number one wide receiver in a couple years since Tony Romo retired, right? And people want to blame Dak Prescott, and maybe Dak Prescott isn't as good as he seemed when he came on in his rookie year. But do you really think that a dude who is complaining about not being a true number one option on every single play in Des Bryant with the Cowboys is going to come here to a team where Joe Flacco, and I'm not even going to make the, the check down points, his entire career, even if you want to say that at his best, Derek Mason was a number one or Anquan Bolden was a number one or Torrey Smith was a number one. He Tor- never, he ne- he, but my point is he never favored a certain uh, receiver over anyone else except for Dennis Pitta. Unless it's a tight end, he will not give one receiver a, a an astronomical more amount of looks than any other. And I feel like if 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 Des Bryant came here by week three or four, he'd be saying, "I need a new quarterback." No, no, because he, he's been put into shape by the Cowboys cutting him. You're, you're I don't a, know. You're listen. You're in a different structure when you get cut. In other words, it's hard to sit there and scream and holler that I'm not going. First of all, they're going to interview him. They're going to see his attitude. They're going to see is is that still there? But uh, Mel Kiper has projected the Ravens' first three picks. The first one shocks me, and he says on uh, round one Calvin Ridley instead of DJ Moore. That shocks me. Shocks me. But the theory is Ridley underwhelmed at the combine, but his college tape shows a player who's nearly uncoverable. I'm going to trust the tape in this case and still make him my top ranked wideout. Maryland's DJ Moore is not far behind. All right. Uh, then he goes to Mark Andrews, a tight end from Oklahoma. There's no purpose to take a tight end at 16, there's just none. 
because there's about three or four of them. They like this guy, Hunter Herson, but he'll be there at 25, so it could be a trade. If they trade down, it's for a tight end. And uh, a position they need to fill, and that's Frank Ragnall, for a center from Arkansas. They must fill that position. And this guy could very easily, or somebody could be drafted by the Ravens as a center, uh, you know, in the third or fourth round and wind up starting. It would not be a shock at all. The loss of Ryan Jensen, you know. Anyway, if those picks happen the way I said, uh, Mr. Flacco will be a happy camper. Now, obviously, you would rather them pick DJ Moore over Calvin Ridley. But well, that's personal reasons. Right, if right. they think Ridley's better, then take Ridley. Well, I mean, it, it, it's interesting, though, because I feel, I mean, when we at the end of the uh, college football season, I feel like you would be talking about uh, – our boy more at the end of the first round or the top of the second round so that it would be a prime trade back target but it seems like his stock it's over. has no it's over yeah yeah I, he's going from 28th uh mike mayock has him as 24th he's going in the first round absolutely i mean, i think he's going before ridley now see the question about ridley is Ridley played mostly as a slot receiver in in college and i mean there's been a lot of legit stars who have come i mean jarvis landry is the same way i mean he's he's made a lot of money being a slot receiver but uh, the, the things about DJ Moore is, I mean, it's basically the, what, the thing that is making people argue for him in draft stock is what you watched all year is that he turned chicken, uh, you know what, into chicken salad. And right. it, and it's amazing that on, on those merits alone, he might be the top wide receiver drafted in this draft, which is... Well, also his performance of the combine. Yeah. Whatever it's worth, according to Dennis Galatis, who I do, whose opinion I respect tremendously... He he could he broke the bank at the uh, his three cone drill, right, which shows ability to shift and get open and make breaks was incredible. But I'm I'm biased, but so be it. Now something happened the other night that I saw. The Yankees Tyler Austin goes into second base and spikes Brock Holt from the Red Sox. This was the most blatant, obvious like spiking I've seen in a long time. And yet, it's unfathomable that many announcers say what, Danny? That it was just a hard baseball play. Are they out of their minds? And this guy only gets five games. He intentionally tried to hurt somebody. How does he get a pass? I don't understand. You know, they, they talk about, they talk about, you know, trying to stop fights and stop this and stop that. They don't what? want to stop fights. The way that they promoted all three fights that happened this week, Major League Baseball's official YouTube and official Twitter account and stuff, I mean, they, they want to uh, punish these players all they want or not punish in the case that you're talking about with, with Tyler Austin. But, I mean, MLB, I don't think, is necessarily upset about this sort of intrigue of these fights. And, I mean, you want to play up the bad blood, and I, I, I truly believe that. I mean, if you're, if you're throwing a baseball at someone intentionally, I feel like they should be uh, punished a little bit harsher, even if the instigator is someone sliding hard in a dirty slide. But it, it is it is kind of interesting right now that in this day and age, you think that, I mean, people are giving hockey a hard time. And, I mean, it's not obviously not as common. Tell you what, though, they, they threw that guy out right away in the Caps game. Yeah, they sure did. All right. Tossed him out. Did he get suspended for another we'll game? We'll see. Caps. That's another story. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the most... This is the most pathetic situation that you can imagine. How about the, how about, I mean, this is a complete non sequitur, but how about the Wizards benching Wall and Beal to make sure that they play the number one seed Raptors as opposed to facing the Celtics? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, this, this, this seems like a, a vintage uh, Washington sports playoff season, spring playoff season. It really looks like it's gearing up for that right now. I don't really understand why you want to play the Raptors instead of the Celtics I without Kyrie. That's what I'm saying. It, was, it almost seems like John Wall is is scared of Terry Rozier, which I know isn't the actual case. But how can you explain the fact that you'd rather face the Raptors with them having home home court? I'm not sure. No, what bothers me about that is if you told me that, all right, uh, the game was on Wednesday and then Friday with two days rest or one day's rest, they'd have to play the Celtics or or whoever – and you said, well, you know what? I got to get these, keep these guys healthy. I'm afraid to play one. I don't want anything to happen. But that theory, if that was their theory, I hope it doesn't backfire, but we know it probably will because <laughs> it's the Wizards and the Capitals.
It's the Verizon, or I'm sorry, the... Uh, and the Redskins, the and the Ravens, and the Orioles. And now the Nats are slumping. Right? <laughs> How can you have all these teams and not one winner? Well, I mean, hey, even the Nats haven't gotten out of the first round yet. Oh, they have the same capital problem. Oh, yeah. Except for one. I don't know. Caps have so much, so much talent. That's unbelievable. However, what was the guy's name who scored? Aninen, the guy they got from the oh, Blackhawks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't even. Holy cow, was he fast. I yeah. mean, they're, they're giving Grubauer hell. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You got to give the guy credit. Unreal. Uh, what was your sports highlight of the week today? Of uh, tell you know, this week. To me, there was one that really stood out to me. So you're going to be surprised, but I was pretty blown away by the by Patrick Reed at the end with at the Masters. Like I, I I thought the way that he pulled away and and I mean the whole story around that. I mean maybe it wasn't necessarily on the course, but finding out basically his entire backstory and and I mean you're a lot more of a golf fan than I am, but figuring out that he, this dude's a, a true heel and the fact that was very a true few, heel. He, well pe- people still are are still kind of iffy about him, but I mean he won in a very legitimate and 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 forceful manner. And after being in at the Valspar a couple weeks earlier, I I, I thought I was pretty blown away by that. And well, that's why everybody was rooting for Jordan or Ricky. Right. Ricky, he, Ricky's never won one. But look, to me, when the USA was one, two, and three, I'll be honest with you, I don't care who won. And I love Patrick Reed. What he did at the, at the Ryder Cup was just incredible. Right. He is, and that's why he won the Masters. He made that five foot putt on 17 that was incredible. It was gutsy. It was, you know, he never choked. He did everything he had to do. He went party. He won like Tiger will win. Get on top and then just cruise your way home without making mistakes. And if you think that's easy, you've never played golf. All right. You've never, because, you know, one ball in the water at 12, like Spieth did to blow a tournament. One bad drive on 10, like 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 Rory Rory did. All right. It takes one shot. Rory looked like he was going to be right there for the rest of the, and then he he had that bad drive and it was like it was over. Like you saw it in his eyes. Well, Rory, let me tell you something about Rory, okay? I, I can't tell you why, but Rory just choked. It seemed like it seemed like he he, he, played, he knew he at was that horrible point he wasn't when win. he missed the short putt for eagle. I can't believe you watched it all. No, it, I, 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 there was the, maybe was I'm the having an effect on you or something. But <laughs> the, the Masters, the all four days, uh, was just magnificent. The overemphasis on Tiger was absurd. The mere thought that they thought that people would think that Tiger could have won that tournament after being away for three years. A, but the Valspar, dude. I mean, yeah. like he. But wait, but the expectations too high. The mere fact he made the cuts a miracle. That's true. All right. The mere fact he didn't finish, you know, the you know in last place, and he shot two under par, or one under par the second, two under par the second day. It's a miracle. The guy hasn't played in so long. But geez, who whiz? I mean, come on. The last day they're showing his shot on seventeen <laughs> instead of showing the leaders. The first two days I can understand. But, uh, no, I think it's incredible, his comeback. I think it's, like, it, it's fantastic. So what's your sports story? My of the story week? of the week. My sight of the week, all right, and was Utani. Yes. With the bases oh, loaded. Oh, my goodness. Hits that tweener to right field. He gets to third base in about nine seconds. <laughs> and it's like an antelope running around the base. He's fast. Or a kangaroo. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen anything like that for a guy that big. He's six five, and he's and he's flying around the bases, and he's he, and he's going perfect through six and striking out ten, and had a three home run home stand. Listen, the, he's living up to the hype, and I couldn't be happier. I, I'll talk to you about this. Off I air can't for, wait to see. I, I'm seeing him live in in May, and and I'm I'm very excited for. It. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out to L. A. and see him in 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 Anaheim. Oh, you're going to Anaheim, yeah, awesome, I am, I am going to, awesome. I, but he's coming to Baltimore, so I know. I mean, you know. Well, we'll all see him. But I mean, he he's definitely appointment viewing right now for sure. He is unreal. But here's the problem: he doesn't play the day before he pitches, or the day after he pitches. Right. So we, we're either going to see him three four, three, four times a week, tops hitting. But we're only going to see him one time. Right. Because I mean, we could see him twice right. and in the if field. he pitches on Friday. Right. And then he would play on Sunday. Right. But if he pitches on Saturday. Or if, or if he pitches on Thursday, they can see him bat for uh, Saturday. Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. But I mean, well, and but he's also been doing some more pinch hitting and stuff. Like, listen, they're going to, like, come May. If he's 
still raking. And, I mean, he's going to get more at-bats. Like, they're going to get try to find a way to get him in the lineup. I mean, they're basically just trying to feel things out right now and make sure he stays healthy. But, man, it's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, the baseball season so far has been, been, been pretty fun. All right, Danny, how old are you? You're 25? I'm 25. Do you ever play baseball? Yes. Middle little league or high school or whatever? Yes, through, through middle school, for sure. Do you sure. have any power? I had power once I gained some weight, uh, sixth, seventh grade, but I was, I was never really a power Do you guy. ever had any real power? No. Well, today the Orioles invited me to take batting practice. No kidding. Right. And you, you, you have some boog pal to you. I, 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 I see. I, I, I can see you getting behind one. Look, guys who wear this kind of a back break. <laughs> I'm trying For those to watching on News Channel I'm 8. <laughs> <laughs> we won't show that to anybody. I'm glad you didn't have a camera. But so they invited me. I'm sorry, I had to see it. To, so they invited me to take batting practice. Okay. All right. Now, the key to that is I think long, you know, I'm a 30 year season ticket holder. Right. That's a long time. Yeah. So here's the, here's the catch to it if I hit a ball out of the park, all right. They pay for my tickets. Oh. Now, I could bring a ringer. So, a proxy, as they call it. Yes. So, I'm looking yesterday for ringers and this and that. And I'm uh, somebody I know played in minor league ball or maybe had a touch in the majors with the Atlanta Braves. Somebody named Kowitz. And uh, then there was uh, other guys. I call up my good friend, Michael Ginsburg, who went to Maryland who was a tremendous hitter. He says, Bruce, he said, I could have done it when I was 22, but I'm 40 now. <laughs> he said, I, I don't think it's possible. So then he told me about this fast pitch, uh, slow pitch softball guy who can't hit home runs because that's part of the game now. You're only allowed like three home runs a game for a team. Okay. So you have to keep the ball in the park with line drives and stuff like that. But I haven't been able to get a hold of him. <laughs> so if somebody's out there who can hit a home run and you've never played professional baseball, all right, in the minors or majors, you didn't play college baseball. Now, the problem is, is when you take those people out of it, you know, you almost have to find what, like a tremendous football player who didn't play baseball. Right. Who can just like. Get a hold of one. Like, yeah. what's his name? Crosby. Right. As much as I hate the Penguins, I would have asked them to rep to proxy <laughs> for me. Crosby took batting, batting practice the other day. What do you think he did? Three balls out of the park. Of course. And I mean, a couple of them were just yeah. boomers. So, you know, it looks like it's going to be me or my son. All right. My son's got a better. There's no shot. Let's, let's hope you I don't have the infield. Listen, I don't, I'll be happy if I put contact on the ball. Right. It's a machine. They say they're going to have it toned down to 50 miles an hour, which is pretty hittable. No, it's, it's hittable, but it, you'll, you'll be surprised by how, how quick that goes by. Now, my problem is I, I play in a beer league softball league at, uh, at Patterson Park, and they lob the ball nine feet in the air, and I can't get it. I'm the worst hitter because the ball is coming down at, at, at 10 miles an hour, nine feet in the air, and you're supposed to be able to hit it out. So, I mean, I couldn't even be a ringer for you even if I was in shape right now. So. If it was softball. <laughs> well... No ringer, but it's a lot of fun. I've never taken batting practice. and uh, That sounds fun. I hope you guys take a lot of pictures. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, the Orioles are taking the pictures, video, and you sign all kinds of waivers and stuff like nice. that. I, I'm probably going to let my son do it. I don't yeah, want to yeah, balance myself. You don't want to herniate a disc either. Right. Believe me, I probably have one now. <laughs> all right, with that, we'll head out to break number two. This is Bruce Posner. You are listening to Coons Ford Presents. The Sports Maven this Saturday and every Saturday here on CBS Sports Radio. A little Ronda Rousey talk when we come back. This is the Sports Maven Show. Presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, here's the Maven himself, Bruce Posner. All right, this segment's brought to you by Coons Ford. All right, the best uh, Ford dealer in Baltimore. One of the best dealers in Baltimore for sure. I've certainly bought enough of my cars there. And for everybody who's a former customer of Coons, check your email. They're sending out additional money above and beyond anything that the factory has if you come in and purchase a new vehicle from them in, uh, I think it's a 30-day period. Uh, I got my letter the other day, and I should be meeting with Mr. Kulatsos. All right? And while we're talking about tremendous sponsors... Donald Science and Science and Kirk. 
when you select a professional, you always look to the backgrounds of the persons involved, particularly involving their experience, competence, and established performance. I'll ask Danny, is there any firm better than Science and Kirk? You work there? No. All right. How have you found your time there? It's one of the. It's easily the best workplace that I've ever been a part of. It's an awesome family atmosphere. I love Science and Kirk. Yeah. And uh, Danny's doing great there, and uh, they love him there, and it's been a great hookup, and I'm proud of I had something to do with that. Thank you, Bruce. Science and Kirk have handled more auto accident cases than any law firm in the history of the state of Maryland. You get a lot of calls about auto cases? <laughs> hey, in the history of Maryland. The Science family is on their third generations that extend all the way back to the 20s. Yeah, the 1920s. Call their hotline 24-7 at 1-800-LAWYERS for assistance. All right, you know, we keep talking about the absurd absurdities of sports these days, and we even get to the most absurd thing I've ever seen. I'm going to bring in my buddy Wayne Viner. Wayne, how are you today? Hey, things are going pretty well. Reporting live from the tennis courts over here in Montgomery County. No, that's a, that's important. That's, that's What's the big match, you and Mason? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, me and Mason. We're getting Mason uh, tuned up here for the summer. All right, all right. Well, let's talk about... Before we get to the spring football day, uh, Conor McGregor for a second and Ronda Rousey. These are the two stars of UFC, and maybe we're not going to ever see either one in the UFC. Conor McGregor, I am so disappointed in Dana White not saying he's banned from the UFC. I mean, to me, for what he did, ruining that card, to me, was unbelievable. And now I have a report from WrestleMania on Ronda Rousey, not from Wayne Viner, because he's going to do spring football for Maryland. But give me a one-minute summary of the Ronda Rousey match. The Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle, former gold medalist versus Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, was one of the best professional wrestling matches of the last 10 years. Uh, it's amazing that a non-professional wrestler, now granted a natural uh, combat uh, athlete like Ronda Rousey still, the fact that she was able to go in there and put on a match that unanimously, across 75,000 people who were at the Superdome in New Orleans for that and show millions on Sunday, watching on and TV. millions watching on TV, it got over. And, 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 and that's a wrestling term, but the fact that it, it got over with the fans, uh, the most memorable moment in the match was, uh, obviously, she was uh, there was a very, very big cat and mouse game with Stephanie McMahon, the 41-year-old uh, Incredible, of, incredible non owner. Non-wrestler. Now, granted, she's been in the industry her entire life, being the daughter of Vince McMahon and being the wife of uh, Paul Levesque, Triple H. It, it's, it's astonishing that she was able to get in there. Now, it looks like the, t the company wants to make Stephanie McMahon and Ronda Rousey the new Vince McMahon and Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's what they're really pushing. Doesn't Rousey hard. eventually wind up fighting uh, Ric Flair's daughter. And, and and that's what it looks like is being set up for next year's WrestleMania. Ch Charlotte Flair did win at WrestleMania on Sunday. Um, but uh, It was a great match. It was we'll a great match, and, and Ronda Rousey looks like she knows what she's doing in the professional wrestling ring. All right, real quick. Wayne, Connor Kelly, Bryce Young, and Joel Tinney uh, will go early in the MLL draft next week. I wouldn't be shocked if Connor Kelly was number one, would you? No, I wouldn't. The uh, range the kid has, the eyes in the back of the head for the assist. We went, Merrill was up at Penn State on Sunday. The crowd was getting after him, and he liked it. After a while, they backed off because he just destroyed Penn State, as he usually does. Maryland takes that one. Maryland has Rutgers, number eight Rutgers, tomorrow night at 730. I'm sure you'll be out there. Rain or shine, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, I know one thing, and we talked about it. You said to me, Bruce... I can get tickets to the Caps game on Sunday night. It's up against Rutgers. So I said, well, what are you going to do? I mean, I can understand you wanting to see the Caps. He said, I'm going to watch Maryland Rutgers. And that says it all about the Caps. What a well, it also, hey, it also says it all about Maryland lacrosse. This is the golden age right now of Maryland lacrosse. Yeah, yeah. You win the national championship. You're number one. You're on national TV a couple times the next Three weeks. You're on all three weeks, and you end up with Hopkins at Hopkins. It's going to be a classic. Doesn't get any better. All right. I know you're looking forward to today, and uh, you know I'm taking batting practice with the Orioles and uh, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So I will miss spring football today, but Wayne will not miss it. We'll have videos. Thousands and thousands are watching our football videos. Wayne and Mason have done a phenomenal job. What are we looking for today in the spring football game, Wayne? I'm going to focus on the defense, and the reason is that both starting quarterbacks, whichever way you go, Terrell Pagrome 
or Kasim Hill both out with knee rehabs, so the offense might not be where it's going to be when the Terps take the field against Texas in September. So I'm going to look at the defense. You have the highly rated Gaddy Twins. You're going to see them up front. You're going to see what was the third best player in America a few years ago, Byron Coward, at one defensive end position. Uh, the, you've got a, a, what I think is the almost a sure NFL player in Antoine Brooks, who plays a hybrid safety linebacker for Maryland. It, it's coming. The whole program is moving along in the right direction, much better size. Everybody's a little bigger. They look faster this year. I, I think that we are trending up for Maryland football. Well, after four and eight, there's only one way to go, all right? And that is up. And well, I, well, I, both of us have seen some two and tens there. So you can go down from four and eight. We've seen it. Yeah, you're probably right. But, uh, no, I appreciate your optimism. You've been all over it. And uh, as lacrosse ends, I get much more into it. But, uh, I, I, you know, let's see what happens today. You know, I only care about one thing today, that nobody gets hurt. I mean, this is a show, show thing for the fans. What kind of crowd do you think? Will they get ten grand today? No, I think it's going to be more in the four or five range. But uh, you got to win some games. you got to win some serious games to get people out in this area for spring football. It's not Maryland Day, is it? No, that's next week. You know, what I, you know what I'm surprised about? Ohio State played Michigan across last night, and they hooked it up with a spring football game, and there was like 70,000 people there. Well, now, you know, it's different in Ohio State. But last year, they hooked up. Didn't they hook up with the Maryland lacrosse game, or am I crazy? Oh, yeah, they did. And it was years a, ago, and it was to a, get people out there. And it was a good crowd. It was a heck yeah, of a... Yeah, it was a big crowd. I mean, they, that's real football. Ohio State, Alabama, Auburn, you're going to get big crowds. Not at Maryland, not yet. But, I mean, when they hooked it up with lacrosse, they still had a lot more than they probably will have today. I don't know why they didn't do it again, uh, because uh, they're playing tomorrow, and they're playing next Sunday. They could have done it uh, next Sunday. But uh, Ohio State's in next Sunday. Ohio State did win. They're 1-2. and two. Michigan's 0-3. and three. Hopkins is 2-0 and oh going to Penn State. Look at that game today. That's, Penn State is just eager for a win after that loss last week to Maryland. What a great game that was, Wayne. Uh, we're just about out of time. A couple more things. With a record at six of 6-5, six and five, Wayne, how is Syracuse still rated number 7? Can you figure that out? They lost, no. again, they lost again to Cornell this week, and Cornell's a good team, but they're 6-5. and five. I they mean, probably could have used uh, Logan Wisnowskis. Yeah, I think they, they could have. I think they could have. Thank you, Mr. Desco. All right. right. Hey, finally, Kevin Anderson moves on from being, being the athletic director at Maryland. We'll have more on that story on Wednesday on Turp Talk at 6 o'clock. In your but gut th- feeling, is our buddy going to get the job? No, Did, I don't think so. Damon Evans will not get the job, you don't think? No, I don't think so. Okay. But we can get into why on Wednesday. Yeah, we'll talk about that then. I love Damon. I, I really would like to see him get the job. But uh, and here's the final point of today. And we go back to the New England Patriots. And you know who Belichick's new interest is, Danny? And uh, from, you know, sarcastically or not, I don't Des know. Des Bryant? No, no. Lamar Jackson. All right. I want the Ravens to draft him. You know, I you, when you see Belichick looking at Lamar Jackson closely, he's got something in his mind for him, and it's not playing Lamar Jackson at end. You know, the Brady era will come to an end, although it doesn't seem like it, but he's now 41. Uh, it will come to an end. But look out. When Belichick's looking at you, something means something. What do you think, Wayne? I think that he could be the new slash player for them for a couple of years. Maybe takes over for Brady. Maybe Belichick's biggest moves are drafting these quarterbacks, gets the whole world interested, and turns them into first and second round draft picks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I, I just found that very fascinating. I don't think Lamar Jackson's going to lay. I don't know when's New England's pick. They always seem. Oh, we're out of time. Wayne, sorry, got to go. Bruce Posner, go Terps tomorrow night against Rutgers. Have a great spring football day.